I've been on this thing lately and God knows for the life of me, I just can't seem to let it go. You guys have heard me speak about it a time or two because I truly believe that there is no experience and I mean no experience, whether it's big, it's small, bad or good. Experiences that happen in real time that, you know, they're so minuscule, we don't even think about them, we don't even pay attention to them. I don't believe anything randomly happens. I don't think anything happens without a divine purpose. I truly believe since the day we were all birthed into this world, everything that we have ever experienced has been divinely placed in our life to ultimately push us in the direction of our destiny. You know, me, like so many of you guys, I've struggled with what is my why? Why am I here? I've been frustrated. I've been depressed. I have been trying to figure out my purpose. But I have learned that when I stopped using this and started using this, allowing myself that inner voice, that inner feeling, the accumulation of all of the experiences, that is, and, and just surrendering. Just, just saying, you know what? Let, 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 let all of the experiences that I have, that I have ever gone through, let them manifest themselves. And that's when the answers started to come. That's when I started to figure out what is my why. I can think back to the early days of show and prayers. You know, being born to a teenage mother. By the time my mother was 22 years old, she had six kids alcoholic father i love the man i loved him dearly but he suffered with addiction for the better part of his life you know i'm bronx born and raised coming up in the south bronx in the 80s it was nothing but crack crime and hip-hop and i can think back to myself you know with my little headphones on and just consuming this music and really falling in love with this art form sneaking to the jams in the park and just listening and seeing people dance and watching the dj do their thing i didn't know at that time that that this music that i fell in love with would define a better part of my life and i would have this long-term career in the music industry where not only me breaking but working with so many of the biggest artists on the planet. I had no idea that this would come to me, but it was all placed to divinely. It started from the very beginning. I even look at my mother, you know, my mother, I can't even remember a time in my life where she wasn't working two jobs, but you know, with all them kids, you know, the, the, she was only making ends meet. So when she wasn't working her full-time jobs, we was, we, she was hustling socks, selling socks, and going up to Fordham Road, selling t-shirts, and she had me and my brothers with her. And, and from there, I learned the hustle. I learned the grind. It was, you know, I'm, I'm eight years old. I'm out there selling socks, selling t-shirts. From that, I'm going and packing bags. I'm pumping people's gas. I'm shoveling snow. I'm doing whatever because my mother just couldn't afford it. But because she couldn't afford it, because we weren't handed anything, I, I, I'm a hustler. I'm a natural born hustler. You know, my dad struggling with addiction and loving a man who struggled with this addiction, addiction. It made me say no to drugs. It made me, you know, drink with discernment and, and really, you know, I, I, I could because I understood what an addiction can do to a person. That's why I don't look down. You know, we got this heroin epidemic going on and so many people are strung out and they're losing their life. And, and you know, all of these people are taking these different pills and, and oxys and everything else. You know, I look and I understand this problem that they're dealing with, even if it started off casual or started off for fun, it is now greater than themselves. It is something that they need help for. So I never look down on these people. But that comes from growing up in the 80s, watching people on crack, looking at my dad who struggled with that, with, that, with that addiction. I can even go back to my high school days. I thought I was a pretty smart guy. You know, graduated, no problem. Go off to college and I realized just how bad that New York City school system at that time was. People, people, you know, were coming to college and they were so much more advanced in terms of their academic than we ever was. We just wasn't prepared. But even though the obstacles were put before us, you know, it was sink or swim. Either I was going to pass or fail. 
We were being taught on a collegiate level. And I'm looking at these people who were prepared and we just wasn't. It wasn't our fault. We just wasn't because the school system didn't prepare us. But it made me say, you know what? I have to stay up late. I have to get up early. I have to do whatever it takes to get myself to a level where I can pass these classes. But I'm built for it. I'm used to the adversity like so many of you guys are. I just want you guys to stop looking at yourselves and your circumstances. You're not a victim. You really are a benefactor. You really, really are. It's nothing that is happening in this life. It's nothing that's happening to you. It really is happening for you. But you have to see the glass half full, not, hit, not half empty. You can't look at your circumstances as why me. Look at, it, look at it as why not me? Why is this happening to me? How is it gonna play a role in my future? And get pumped up about it. Be excited about it. Be excited about the fact that whatever you're going through, good, bad, I don't care if you're locked in a cell, if you allow these experiences to manifest, they will ultimately point you in the direction of your ultimate destiny. But you have to accept what it is Submit to the process and say, you know what? I believe that this is happening for me. It's not happening to me. Guys, you all know I'm a spiritual guy. I don't believe God makes any mistakes. I truly don't. You know, that's why we can look and we, we, we hear so many people, you know, who are uber successful and, and, and they think you know, their parents who are immigrants for really instilling that, that work ethic in them. They understand that coming to this country with nothing, with absolutely nothing, eating out of dumpsters, you know, doing whatever it took to survive. That was not something that was bad. It was something that was good because it set them up with a work ethic that they were willing to do whatever it took so that their kids would never have to eat out of dumpsters. You are a benefactor. Embrace your situation. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how bad or how good it is. Trust me when I tell you, it will all work to serve you if you submit to the process and start looking within and stop relying so much on this. Peace and love. I'll catch you all on the next video and make every move a power move. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.